Hey, Tyler, how's it going? Good, thanks. How are you? Good. Long time no see. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> how's, how's life going? Good. Um, busy, I guess, but weird right now with COVID. Yeah. Uh, kind of like we were just saying, just kind of going day by day and you're kind of stuck with being here and you can't kind of go and do what you want like normal, but that's all right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> not sure you know much about the podcast, just uh, kind of getting to know people's journeys in, uh, in Hamble and Alberta and other places around the country. Um, so I thought it'd be great to have uh, some uh, people on that are not as much involved anymore that have had been a big part of our growth in handball. So I'd lo- uh, be good to hear from you and your journey. And I'm sure a lot of people would uh, uh, love to hear from you. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen a few of the podcasts. Um, most of the guys that I kind of know or yeah. partially know some of the newer players and stuff that I don't know very well, but it's a good way to kind of get to know people, I guess, yeah. outside of your generation or like you said, that aren't really around as much anymore. So, yeah. Um, so you were a big part of our program for many years. If you can just go and kind of uh, give us a little brief of how you got involved in handball, uh, a little bit of your handball experiences. Yeah. Uh, well, I started in grade nine, uh, junior high at Sherwood Heights, which was 2010. Um, and I actually got recruited by Craig, which is funny because I think he said in his podcast how like he was involved in getting people to play. Um, yeah. It was kind of just coincidence. They had a team in grade eight, um, my grade eight year, like the year before I started playing and I didn't play. I didn't even know about it. And then the goalie who they had that year had graduated. So for my grade nine year, there was no goalie. And I'd always played soccer and I was always a goalie in soccer. And I kind of knew Craig through the school, um, different classes and stuff and some of the other guys on the team. And he'd approached me just saying like, hey man, like, we need a goalie. We need someone to kind of stand in the net. You play goalie, like can't be that much different. Um, anybody who's made that transition knows it's a lot different, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's kind of how I got started. Um, yeah. He kind of convinced me just to, just to come out and he said, it's a good time. You'll enjoy it. This season was only like, I don't know, maybe two or three weeks commitment. Just yeah. the one junior high provincials that was like six teams, I think. At the time, yeah. Yeah, maybe eight at the most. It was just at just at Sal in their one gym, I think. Yeah. And yeah, it was the weekend and I we <clears throat> did a trial and practice for a couple of weeks and that was it. And then uh you went on you went on to high school or did you go to Alberta first? No, so I played in high school in grade ten and then towards the end of that season, um I I would have it was probably you that would have reached out to me. I don't specifically remember but they asked me to come try out for the provincial team that summer. And I wasn't able to, cause I was actually already going on a vacation with my mom that summer. Yeah. And the trip that was scheduled was at the same time. So I wouldn't be able to go, but that trip that the provincial team did, they ended up not going. I can't remember where they were planning on going. I think it was falling through. Wasn't it like Florida? Yeah. It was somewhere like tropical, I think. So it could have been Florida. Yeah. Cause then we ended up going to Italy, right? Yeah, so they ended up going. I don't know where they ended up going, but I was kind of bummed because I would have been able to actually go. Okay. Um, things kind of got switched last minute. So I played my grade 10 year of high school, and then in my grade 11 year of high school, that's when I started with the youth provincial team. Yeah, because I remember, I, I mean, we talked about this a long time ago, because I remember writing to you a couple times, like, hey, you're going to try out, and there was no responses. Yeah, I was, like, I was just is- like, I can't even do this. Like, there's no point in even yeah. going right um so yeah so you started after your grade 11 like the yeah, high school season during my grade 11 high school season which would have been 2012 what was your first trip uh so my first trip was uh spain and then we went directly to italy um, yeah. and i ended up kind of going almost on a fluke because the goalie who had been playing with that group of guys ended up kind of just leaving the program kind of last minute um i think you it was actually- what goalie was it was Jordan uh, shoots. Oh, really? that oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Which is funny because that's I, that's the guy who left Short Heights. He was a year older than me, so I kind of like filled his role at Short Heights and then filled his role um, on the youth team. And when we did when we did Spain, Italy, Max was also one of the youth goalies, Max Wag, yeah. uh, and he could go to Italy the second half, but he had a prior commitment and he couldn't go to Spain. So yeah. I was the only goalie going to Spain. So I'd had like maybe two or three months experience before going to Spain with all these youth guys who like 
uh, Brandon Foster, Daryl Lacusta, Nathan Zielinski, Craig Fisher, like they'd all played together for probably at least a year or two. And I kind of just jumped into the mix with very little experience and then went to Spain. Do you remember that experience? Like uh, much? Yeah, I remember being really nervous, like super, super nervous my first couple games. Yeah. And obviously like you're playing in practice and camps and stuff here with the, with the best guys around here. Yeah. And there was a couple who were older than me. So they had that bit more strength and stuff than maybe I, what I was used to but yeah. I remember with Spain. And I think, I can't remember if it's our first or second game, but I vividly remember playing a team and they were Russian and they were all like, you know, six foot, probably 200 pounds. I think half of them were bald. Yeah, <laughs> and they throw the ball so hard, and like just some of their crosses and movement was just like our guys could do it, but just not with that kind of speed and kind yeah. of like natural instinct that these guys had. And I think I did okay in that first game, but I remember just thinking like, "Well, this is another level." Like, I knew yeah. it was challenging, and you know, we're kind of like babies in the sport compared to some of these guys. But it was definitely like, "Oh wow." Like and that was like I mean I think that was the start of like that amazing generation that you guys had, right? Yeah. Cause I think that group of guys really bonded, and uh, it was just the start. Then we went to Italy. Was was your first trip to Italy the crazy one? Where yeah. like that was the one where you were getting up at like four or five in the morning every day because the like the train or the bus was canceled and we had to find our own way to games. The buses never came to pick us up from the tournament. Yeah. Or we, we get the bus would come and we'd go to the game and then we'd go to leave and there'd be no bus. And we just kind of had to improvise or we knew that there was a way there, but not a way back. Yeah. Like, it, I mean, that, that was a great tournament. I had fun. <laughs> I don't know if it was that year or what, but that was horribly disorganized. Yeah, then we got our school got broken into. Yeah, someone climbed in through the window and stole like electronics and money and stuff. Yeah, that was crazy. So, is that kind of when you started really uh, loving the sport and deciding to commit to the sport after that? Yeah, time? yeah. Like I'd always enjoyed it prior to that, but it was kind of just like a recreational sport. Just as like like I said, I played soccer. Like it was kind of just something I enjoyed and did. But yeah, after that first trip. Like, I really bonded with those guys. And like you mentioned, like, we ended up sticking together probably the 10, 12 core group of guys for, for a long time. So yeah. really got close with them. And I really realized that, like, I could maybe take this sport somewhere. Yeah. Um, like, at the very least, you're, you know, you're, I should say very least, but you're traveling to Europe a couple times a year. Like, you're not yeah. going to find that experience somewhere else. And then potentially being able to take it past that point with, like the national team or the higher levels within Alberta or maybe even traveling to Europe to play. And that first year you came on, we did a lot because it pretty much didn't we go to Japan in October, yeah, Iceland well, in December. Yeah. And well, even after, even before we went to Japan, we went and did the flew into Germany and then we played in Hungary in the tournament. Oh, that's right. So this summer you did Spain, Italy, yeah, Hungary in August. Like a month, And then we went Hungary in August and then, in October, we went to Japan, and then that December, we went to Iceland. Uh, just going back to Hungary, I just thought about it. You were, Tyrell was your coach, correct? Yeah. And I remember you guys, I was coaching uh, the younger guys, and uh, you guys had your first game, and you played Bala Ferran? Or... Yeah, Balaton Ferran. Yeah. And Tyrell like comes back, and he's like, we got killed. The, Mike, these guys are all 6'6". Six, six. And I was like, Tyrell, shut up. Just You lost. Like, yeah. big deal, don't exaggerate. And I remember I went to watch one of you guys' game, and we're all sitting, I'm like, holy, look at that team. They're massive. And Daryl's like, that's who we played. Yeah, I remember we got there pretty early because the buses, because, again, it was kind of like Italy where you take these scheduled greyhounds. So yeah. we were out in, like, some little town. Like, it was a weird little place. It was like an hour bus ride or something. Yeah. So I remember we got there really early, so we were changed and warmed up and everything. And, like, we didn't see a team that looked like we were going to play. Yeah. So we thought, hey, maybe we'll get, like, some practice time on the court or something. Or, you know, you get an automatic win or something like that. Because we saw these guys and we're like, that's a men's league team. Because there was a men's division in that tournament. Yeah. So we figured they were that. And they were just monsters. I remember one of the first plays, they came down and they basically just dumped it into their pivot. And I think everybody closed on the pivot. And he <laughs> threw up. I think Parker was probably, like, our biggest, strongest guy at that time. Yeah. And he knocked him off like a bug. And we just... Like, I, I don't know what the score was, but we got just pummeled. Yeah. That was a good <laughs> tournament. That, that yeah, was, it was really cool. 
Yeah, that's uh, the great thing about your group, guy. You guys wanted to play the best teams. Like, it was never you guys are afraid. You know, so many people are like, oh, we got killed, we suck. You guys were like, bring it on, bring it on. Yeah, I mean, you don't you don't really learn anything by, yeah. like, especially at that age, right? We were, like, we were so new to handball. Like, I remember we would speak with teams after and coaches, and these guys were playing and playing for six, seven years. And we're like, oh, yeah, half these guys have been playing for six months. And their eyes were just wide open when they heard that. And I think that came from that mentality of, like, we don't care. Like, we'll yeah. take anybody. If we get beat, we get beat. So what? You'll learn something from it and you'll get better. And that year was the year that your group just got so much better. Because I remember after that, we had the opportunity to go to U16 Pan Am Championships. Yeah. And then it was – I had a parents meeting. And we're like, well, you have two opportunities. We got invited to Japan for the Sanix. And we got the U16 Pan Am so we could represent Canada. And the parents were like, well, what do you think you're going to be more successful at? I was like, well, for sure, Japan. Like, they don't have the highest level of handball and, and the other one playing national teams. And then we went to Japan and uh, we found yeah. a whole new world of uh, handball. Yeah. My, so when I went to Japan, I think that was the second team that had gone. I know some of the guys had gone a year yeah. prior. Yeah. Because we went as like an Alberta team. Yeah. And I think they went as like a Canadian team. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I remember leading up to that, um, I remember you saying it a lot, and then there was two or three other guys who had been to that tournament, and they're just like, guys, the pace is so fast. Yeah. And I remember there was a lot of stress on, like, discipline. Like, if you turn the ball over, it's a fast break goal. Yeah. Like, you have to have that mentality. And everyone kept saying it, and in the back of my head, I was like, okay, like, they're not that fast. And, yeah, yeah same thing. You go, and it was just another eye-opening experience of this is incredible handball. Oh, yeah. So that first year, you got Spain. And in Spain, you also played the Argentina national team. In Hungary, yeah. you played uh, the club that we talked about. In Japan, you played some incredible time. In Nicely, we played that that mini tournament with all the national teams. Yeah, we did. I can't remember. Because that, because I think I went, when I went to, my first time to Iceland was, I think, again, the second time. That oh, I, so you weren't at the one with the national teams? No, we played, oh, okay. we did like the tour to all the different club teams. Okay, but okay, I, okay. I remember playing a couple of the clubs, and I remember you pointing out that guy is one of the guys who was, who plays oh, okay. the team, or this guy's in the national team program. So what, out of your first year, what was the the trip that you think was your most favorite best experience with handball and the country as well? I mean, Japan was cool in terms of the handball experience. Like you're living almost like it was like an athlete's village type of thing, yeah. right? You're up in the mountains. And I remember like the discipline of like, it's the Japanese players, but it's just part of their culture, the respect they would have, like all the, I remember all the Japanese kids standing up in the, cafeteria area when the other team's coaches would come in and they would sit down once um, the other team's coaches had their food and everything like that yeah um and yeah just that that style of handball just how disciplined they are like their warm-ups they just go off and do it and you know nobody's messing around or anything yeah um, and then spain was cool for me too because i was just like my very first experience yeah I don't know, we played in like their kind of central arena there for one game that was my first experience playing and, and something more than just like a gym, right? Yeah. Uh, so that was that was a really that was a really good experience for me too. Plus, it was um, my first dip in with all my teammates, so that was that was really awesome and special. Something is special about your group is that you, there was, like you said, about eleven or twelve that were really committed to handball. There was, I honestly think, there wasn't anything more important to you guys at that time than handball, other than family and school, obviously, but but it was never a mispractice and anyone who came into the program, if they didn't follow your guys' rules, you guys were, well, all of us were like, okay, it's time to leave. Do you think you guys all came in with that same mentality? Do you think it's the group that you guys just all bought in together? Yeah, I think it was kind of just like the combination of everybody kind of coming together. Cause like you want to be successful, right? So you have to kind of be willing to sacrifice something. I think we all kind of had that, but definitely we rubbed off on each other, right? Like if anybody kind of within that core group, if, you know, a couple guys were sort of, you know, not pulling their weight or slacking off, like we would get on each other, right? Yeah. So it wasn't like, I never saw it as one person was kind of the leader of that and everyone else followed. It was almost just kind of like a collective and... Yeah. 
yeah, like if, if you didn't buy in, you either bought in or you were out. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty cool. And I mean, now you guys are starting to grow as handball players and the commitment was there. I mean, again, if I called a special open practice three hours before you guys would be there, it wouldn't yeah. matter. It was like handball was part of your guys' life. Yeah. Now you guys as a group, I think pretty much 90% of them, you were finishing high school and you guys decided to go overseas to Denmark. Yeah. How was that experience going to the Arcus Academy? That was unbelievable. Like I, we kind of knew that that was in a, like an opportunity and something kind of that core group wanted to work towards. I know personally that was something that I really, really wanted to do. And most of like my last year of high school was, that was like a focus, yeah. especially the, that, that season we'd lost. Uh, junior nationals to Quebec. We came in second, so that in was New definitely. Brunswick, correct? In where, sorry? Moncton, New Brunswick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Moncton. Yeah. yeah, we lost to Champlain in, in yeah. the final. Um, so yeah, that I kind of looked at, at at going to Denmark to go to the academy as kind of like uh, you know I'd sort of been working towards it, right? Like we'd gone on the development trips and we wanted to be successful at nationals, and I saw that for me as like the next step. Yeah. Um, but really what made that was the group of people that we had there, which is kind of like almost the theme of my handball career, right? Like this, yeah. this good group of people, um, because there was good players from Denmark and from other countries who were there, but that group of, I think 10 total Alberta players between guys and girls, like, well, I think we really pushed everyone around us to be, to be more competitive. So that, that's what really made that trip going there like big for me um because a lot of the danish the, like people in denmark were playing at a really high level if they go to academy like that they're not playing in the academy right because they're already getting all of these yeah. practices and games through their own clubs they don't need that uh like the academy to facilitate that for them yeah. and going into that i mean i ask all of you guys this is that obviously our program has grown since then the coaching has obviously got stronger um but going there and when you started training, were you think, do you think you were developed well enough to be there? Or do you think like when you got there, it was a whole different world and like, you're like, Oh, maybe in Alberta, we should work on certain aspects of the, our, the goalie technical aspects of that or anything. what do you think going in and the difference between Alberta and the Danish practices and style? I felt that I was ready. Um, I like, like, you know, we'd had conversations like Alberta always develops good goalies. Like that was like kind of like a foundation of, of our teams. Right. Yeah. So I'd already done so many like drills and all like different techniques and practices and stuff. Like I didn't go there and learn anything new, particularly like all the drills that they would have us do were similar, if not the same to the stuff we were doing here Yeah. over there. It's just the, high high level of repetition like that's what i needed yeah. like i was i practice what do like what do we do two or three practices with the academy and then a couple with your club and i found some extra couple practices here and there it was like a men's team i went a couple times they were trying to get me to play yeah. so between that and then your your workouts you're doing things like nine ten eleven times a week sometimes related to handball right and yeah. it's just not possible to do that here having like a job or if you're in school and then obviously with our limitations around gym time and stuff. Yeah. So for me, that was the big thing in Denmark, just the availability of being able to practice basically as much as you want, whenever you want. And you played on a club team. Yeah. Well. So there was actually something weird that year with their season. Like there was some kind of dispute or something. The season started later. Mm -hmm. So I ended up playing on uh it's called AGF. It's like one of the clubs in Aarhus. I played with their youth team. Uh, we went over to Denmark in August. And I think my first game was in October. And we only stayed till December. So we only played a couple months with that club. What division? They were in the, I think they were in the second division of like the youth. Okay. And so second or third. I think it was second. And uh, was your team successful? So our team was weird. Um, I remember when I first went, there was two other goalies. And they kind of looked at me as like, you know, you're from Canada. You don't really know much about handball. And the first couple practices, I was like the one like going in third and taking the least amount of reps. And then once they kind of got to know me a little bit, I kind of, 
like I said, move, moved above those other guys. And then I was their starting goalie after one or two games. I came in off the bench a couple of times and the other guys were all right, but they weren't great. Um, the team was okay. They had two or three players who could or did play at a higher level prior to going to that club. And then a bunch of guys who didn't really take it like too, too seriously. Um, so uh, me, Mackenzie, uh, Spencer O'Donnell and Mark Gordelek all played on that team um, with the A and B team kind of jumping between for a couple of us. And we definitely brought the level up. Like the club wasn't phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, and when we left, they were trying to get into their, their next division, but I don't think they managed it because the way that season was adjusted, we couldn't be there to, to play it out. So they had three or four games after we came home. And were all you guys like big parts of that team? Um, I think it was Mark really had trouble at the at wing just because he was smaller. Yeah. They had a couple bigger guys at wing who they really liked. Yeah. Personally, I always thought Mark was better than them. Um, and he was a much better defender than those guys because they just yeah. didn't care about defense. That's the, the Danish wing mentality, just yeah. run and score goals. Yeah. Um, so I think he kind of got hung out to dry. But we were definitely like brought that level of that that club up for sure like you and i know though eh? you have to know mark mark is a, a most valuable player of any team it oh. just, people don't uh don't understand how important he is to a team yeah especially like on his defensive side yeah. like yeah. he could score zero goals and i would still take him on the exactly. team like, his value on defense so now you're starting obviously that means you're getting a lot of playing time how come yeah. you didn't stay for the year so they'd asked me to come back um so I, I'd always gone with the mentality of just that first semester. Okay. Um, I hadn't really planned on staying for the second. Yeah. Um, the thing with the academy is it, I, like, it is what you make of it kind of thing. Yeah. So if you want to go there and just socialize and meet people and travel and stuff, you can do that, but your handball is not going to get better. But if you want to commit to handball, then your handball is going to get better, right? Um, so I know a lot of the guys weren't going back to the academy. And for me, like kind of having everybody there brought that level up. Yeah. Um, the coaches before we left sat down with us and just said like, hey, thanks for all of you guys coming. Like your competitiveness and how much effort you guys put into it, like really gave us one of like, the highest levels in the academy we've had in quite a few years. Yeah. Well, since that wasn't going to be there, I didn't, I didn't see within the academy, like myself getting that, that much better. And then the club was like, it was, it was good, but. I think being here and preparing for nationals for me was going to be better. Yeah. And there was no, with the youth, there's no opportunity to get paid, obviously. So if I wanted to go back and play with them, I'd either be at the academy or I would have had to go to like school or something like that there. Yeah. And that just wasn't something that I was prepared to do or okay. you know, it was interesting to me. So then you came back and again, we uh, had focus and I mean, we're still a super young team and we had nationals at home and our goal was to win nationals. And uh, we did it, in my opinion, we did it quite easily. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was actually talking, uh, a podcast that's coming up is with Kate Grable. And she was like, we were talking about the game when half the players from Quebec didn't want to end up playing in that game after, after mm -hmm. Daryl knocked a guy out. I think yeah. you slid into a guy and his tooth went flying out. So that, I felt bad because that looked <laughs> like I crashed into him, but he yeah. caught his tooth. Anyone who's played a Millennium Place knows they have the little, like, tiles kind of thing. And his tooth got caught in the seam in the tile. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. So it, it got caught in that. I think I was just kind of running with the ball was bouncing in the crease. And I went to go jump on it. And he just yeah. dove in, I think, from the wing. And I don't even know. We might have, like, barely collided. Um, but, yeah, his tooth got chipped in the floor. So it kind of looked like I took his tooth out, but it wasn't me. Yeah. And that was the start of a... Uh... I think the generation, I think I still believe the best generation we've ever had because you guys went on to win as not the whole group, but the, the program won five national championships in a row. Yeah. You won three. Three. Yeah. Uh, and one in Edmonton, one in Quebec city and one in Manitoba. Manitoba yeah. Which uh, one was your best experience? I mean, the first one stands out because that's the first nationals we ever won. Yeah. Um, the one in Quebec, I guess they all stand out differently um, yeah. for different reasons. The one in Quebec was probably like the hardest one to win, the one that was most competitive. Um, and it's kind of nice to win in Quebec with the Alberta-Quebec rivalry. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, I remember in the final, like, in, like, kind of the hockey rink that they had it, just, like, the Quebec fans, like, kind of booing us and chanting against us and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so that one, that one felt like it was maybe the uh, most well-earned in Quebec. Yeah. And then the last one was cool because the competition wasn't phenomenal, but we just, I think that was the most we ever dominated at a Nationals. I think after the first day, our goal differential was over 100. Yeah, but I don't know if the competition wasn't. I think you guys were that much better than everybody. Yeah. Because we the had Quebec guys teams, a lot of those guys were not, or national team players. Yeah, that's true. It just, I think you guys were so mm-hmm. strong at that point that I don't think anyone could. It's and then, like the peak of the group of guys who I had kind yeah. of played with, and we were all, that was our last, most of us, our last of the, um, like availability to play at under 21. We were going to age out, so... Yeah. Yeah, we were definitely prepared for that. And within those years, we got to, there was an opportunity in 2015, I believe it was 2015. There was the IHF North American Championships for yeah. juniors. And when I heard about it, then I'm like, ooh. Uh, so I applied for the job because I knew it was our group. And uh, we ended up going to Puerto Rico as a national team. We picked up one Manitoba, two Manitoba, one yeah. SAS, one Quebec guy, and the rest were from Alberta. And we were going as Team Canada, playing the national teams. And um, I remember going, getting there, people asking, what do you think? I'm like, well, we're pretty much an Alberta team. So I'm like, probably third or fourth is my goal. And then we ended up winning the, the tournament. How was that experience for you? Well, that was my first experience playing for the yeah. national team. Yeah. Um, and you can't, I don't know, it's hard to explain, like, playing – for your country with your name on your back and hearing the anthem before the games and stuff. But that's really, really special. Yeah. Um, but it was kind of funny because, yeah, we basically were an Alberta team. Um, and that, that one was interesting for me because I never really played for the national team at that level. Like, we played national team players on different trips and stuff, but I never really played, like, a national team as a national team, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I had no idea what to expect. And I kind of kind of like what Jude said, like, that was kind of my assumption, like, maybe we'll do okay, like, maybe, a, like, a, you know, you hope to get a medal kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I remember we played an exhibition game there. We'd gone and played some men's team. Yeah, the um, Puerto Rico team, yeah. Yeah, I think it was the senior men's national team, and yeah. we were the yeah. juniors. And, like, yeah. we, we lost the game, and I think we only lost, by like, maybe five or six. Yeah. And everybody did really well. It was so hot. I remember it being incredibly hot there. Um, and I, we kind of played that game and we did decent. And I thought like, maybe we have a chance at this because I was a senior team and we didn't lose by that much. And we were like competitive with them. Right. So if you take out the edge of these guys are, you know, full grown men and we're still, you know, basically teenagers, you know, maybe we had a chance. And then we played Mexico, Puerto Rico or Mexico, 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 the first game. And we beat Mexico. And I had no expectation of like, how to like, is Mexico better than us usually? Or are we better than them? Or kind of where we line up? And then we beat Puerto Rico pretty easily. I think they only had one or two good players. Yeah. Um, And then losing to the U.S. Like, again, I never played the U.S., but there's always that like Canada-U.S. rivalry in anything. Um, When we lost to them and I didn't think we were going to beat them. Like they were, they weren't even Americans, half of them there. They were all playing professionally essentially and in, in germany and france and stuff and i hated them so much <laughs> so do you remember well number one with the usa team i remember when we lost to them uh i told you guys i'm like we're gonna get them the finals because they were so like that game didn't mean anything to us so like for me as a coach i didn't care about the win i was like trying to figure out their weak spots and any of the americans that were like real americans we just took advantage of those people. Yeah, and we were probably better than yeah. like those players. But the funniest thing is, is we were going to practice. I don't know if you remember this. I and I the, coach from, the coach from the U.S. team bumps into you. Yeah. And, like, and then he comes up to me and pretty much tells me he's going to kick your ass yeah. if, if, you, if you ever do that again. And then going into the finals, it was a, a great, great game. We, we kind of had the lead. We, our game plan, they didn't really know what to do. And we won. And everybody's celebrating. The game's online. You don't go and celebrate with the team. 
you go and find that coach and I don't know what you said, but you were just in it, like not in his face, but you were making sure he noticed you. Yeah. So that coach where he bumped into me, yeah. um, he was watching our practice. He yeah. came into the gym with like, maybe, I think we were just stretching, yeah. but, he, but he was being like sneaky about it. You know what I mean? And it's closed gym practice or whatever. Like you're yeah. playing for a national team. You're not messing around. Yeah. And I remember seeing him and I'm just thinking like, come on, man. Like, why are you in here? We're just stretching. Yeah. I'm just trying to like psych us out or something. And I'm walking off the court and I can see him walking towards me. And I can be a little stubborn sometimes, as I'm sure a lot of guys have played with. Oh. And I'm like, we're in the same path. I'm not moving. You know, yeah. he hits me and we kind of bump into each other. And yeah, he told me to, you know, swore at me or whatever. I can't remember what he said. But yeah. then, yeah, once we played him in that final, I was like, we have to win. Like, there's all this, you know, we will, obviously it's a final you want to win, but I didn't really like that coach. And I can't remember his name, but they had a pivot, big blonde guy yeah. in Germany. Yeah, he was Antoine. Yeah, Antoine. Yeah. And every time he would score, he would kind of yell and do this fist pump. And he would either stare at me as the goalie or, like, the guy who he beat one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. So after we beat them, everyone was celebrating, and I did a little loop up past half, and I, I saw him, and he just looked so dejected. And it wasn't a really good show of sportsmanship. I'm not really proud of it, but yeah. it is what it is. And I kind of did his little fist pump at him, and, you know, he knew I did it to him. And then I saw the coach, and he was looking at me, and I just – I just kind of pointed at him. <laughs> like, I didn't forget, you know what I mean? And then we went back and celebrated. So I guess it's funny to laugh about now. It's not really my proudest moment, but it's kind of, but that's kind of how what? I played it, I guess. <laughs> that was our generation. Like, you know, pe people hated our group. People thought we were so cocky, but it was like the confidence on the team and the work that everyone put in. No one, we just like, everyone went into the games knowing they're going to win. Yeah, and it, it rubbed people the wrong way so much. Anywhere yeah. we went, we got booed. Even at national championships, we were playing Quebec. Every other province was booing us, but it, it was hilarious. And like a perfect Mackenzie, Mackenzie lived off that. Yeah, and, and like it was just awesome to watch you guys. Yeah, and I mean, I I never saw it as cockiness. Like we we were confident. We like knew yeah. what we were and weren't capable of, and we'd all worked really hard. And I would never, I don't think anyone would ever particularly like go out to kind of rub something in someone's no. face or anything. But if someone was going to do something against one of our guys, we're a team, right? So we're not yeah. going to forget. So like that guy, if he wants to shout and celebrate in my teammate's face when he scores, that's fine. But you know, when it's kind of comes back around to him, he's yeah. going to hear about it, right? That was almost like the mentality. It's, yeah. it's us versus everybody else. And you don't like it, whatever. Well, that, and everyone always, like, you know, people didn't understand the amount of work and the sacrifices you guys. I bet you guys look back, your handball career in the junior age was probably twenty twenty five thousand dollars Oh, yeah, at least. Yeah, right? Like, people think, like, and they just, like, don't understand. And, you know, you go in nationals or, oh, why do you guys have to run up the score? Well, what do you want the guys to do? They, they pay, they've sacrificed everything to do this. It's not, yeah, it's, not, I, it's, not, it's not your responsibility. Yeah, like we go, I remember maybe a month or two before nationals, we go go for a run in like the River Valley before yeah. practice, right? So, okay. you know, you almost feel like you kind of earn the right to, to do that, right? We're going to come with our best, and if our best is better than yours, it's not yeah. my fault. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now you got to go to Colombia. Now after the winning the Puerto Rico, yeah. the sad thing, it was the same time as senior nationals. Mm -hmm. So I had to organize the national championships at home. So I couldn't go. Um, you guys ended up winning nas junior nationals. Then the next morning you guys left to Columbia in yep. chaos because your flights got canceled. You flew yeah. around the world. For like 14 hours or something like that. Something I think like we that. were leaving the night. We dropped you guys off like at 6 a.m at the airport and we were leaving like at 7 p.m and you guys were still at the airport when we were at the airport i think we saw you yeah um now you get to columbia how was that experience and you know what that was like for you guys maybe in that level the intensity was the first time with a different coach because at yeah. that point it was me or just me and tyrell yeah yeah that's i i, I specifically remember that because in puerto rico when we lost the u.s i remember you you told everybody this, but I remember you specifically told me this because I think I was asking you, you know, about some guy's shooting or technique or something. You're like, 
we don't lose to the same team twice. Yeah. We, we come in with a different approach. Like if they just beat us, then they beat us, but we're never going to play the exact same game twice. So that was kind of like, I was kind of used to that. Right. So going in with a different coach, I didn't know, you know, if that was going to be able to be kind of relied upon to sort of have that. Uh, yeah. And we had a couple other different players when we went to Columbia too. So the yeah. dynamic of the team was a little bit different. And then that's the next stage of the, of that, that cup. So obviously you expect the uh, level of the, of the teams to be a bit higher, which it, I think it definitely was yeah. on average. Yeah. And then we lost in the final to Columbia by four or five, maybe something yeah. like that. And but we, you beat them in the round robin. Yeah, we beat them in the round robin by a couple. They yeah. had just this one. I can't remember what his name was, but they had this one player who was just unbelievable. And in the final, he just turned it on, and we didn't have the answer. I just remember being so exhausted. Yeah. I think after that final, I remember just like lying on the court for a while. Just everybody was just so bagged, and we were getting taped up before every game and stuff like that. Just that going there right after junior nationals and all the guys who were playing a lot in Colombia had played a lot at junior nationals, obviously. So, yeah. and you um, went in with some injuries cause I don't think Ryan cook could have played in Colombia. I think he did, but I remember him getting taped up for like an hour before every game and he'd maybe be able to play like half the game before he just couldn't handle it anymore. Um, and there were three or four guys who were like that. Yeah. Um, so you're coming back now, like you're still playing Alberta, but I think now your goal is a senior national team. Yeah. Like I think those were them. Uh, what, did, what did you do with the senior national team? So I only technically played in one competition with the senior national team in the Pan Am Championships. Yeah. In, was that 2015 or 2016? Had to be like 16 because 15 was Puerto Rico. Okay, so it's 2016 then. Yeah. Um, so that was actually my first and only tournament with the senior national team. Um, after after that, I kind of stepped back from handball, basically. So was was did you know before that that was going to be one of your last trips with the like as a national team? Like you know that was it for you with national team? No, um, we kind of like obviously we'd kind of gotten together as a team a little bit and prepared. Yeah. Uh, for that. Um, and it's always like anybody who's played for the senior national or any national team knows that it's so hard to get all of the players from all over the country to come together consistently and be able to practice and to have everything, you know, lined up and do well. Um, so I remember that was kind of hard and we, we went to, I think when we got there, that was the first time I was meeting a couple of the guys who were on the team, yeah. guys who were playing overseas or whatever, and they're just not able to come. <clears throat> which I understand, like obviously you have financial restrictions and if you're playing at a club obligations to your club or whatever. But I just remember like, th like those guys were, were awesome and I liked playing with them, but it, it wasn't a team when it's just the few guys from Canada getting pieced together with, you know, the few guys from other places. For me, uh, I found that difficult and I really enjoyed that. That's the highest level I've ever played at. Yeah. Um, like we played some unbelievable players, but I think that was really eye opening for me that that was above the level, in my opinion, where I was at, but also like the average of the team was at. Like we went to that and we got, we got last place or second last place or something. Yeah. And obviously you're not going to go to Pan Am championships or Pan Am games or anything and expect to win and, you know, dominate. But I think that was maybe a little bit too lofty for the level we were at. Like we needed to be working up towards that competition with playing teams that were more competitive so we could get better. Do you think that maybe our national program, it's like, even if we're not ready to go, we'll just go because we, we say we need to send the team. Yeah. And I think that's what, at least that I'm aware of the national team yeah. program has always done. Yeah. And it's not really, in my opinion, it's not getting you anywhere. Right. Like, obviously there, there's importance. Like you have to learn, you, you know, growing up in youth handball, you play some teams that are a lot above your level and you take a lot away from that as you're developing. Yeah. But when you're at the level to play like the senior national team, you're obviously still going to get better as a player, but you don't have as much like potential to grow. Right. Yeah. So I don't even know if you really need those kind of beat downs to really learn. Like, you know how to play handball. It's just, it's yeah. just improving as a team and getting a little bit better as an individual. Right. So I was always kind of of the opinion, like when we went to that challenge cup 
and you kind of play those like developing nations, if you will, in terms of handball yeah. as, as a senior program competition like that would probably be better instead of just a couple of camps together to kind of learn each other's names and learn a bit of a playbook and then being thrown into like a high, high level of senior, uh, like a senior national team. So when you look back, do you think that there's anything that, that you think we can be competitive with some of those countries? Like now, I don't know. I know you're kind of out of handball, but uh, the Pan American, there's no more. It's split. There's uh, there's a uh, Norca, which is like North and Caribbean islands. So yeah. now to qualify for a world, you got to beat like USA, Mexico, Puerto Rico, Cuba, Greenland. You don't play Argentina and uh, Brazil. Brazil anymore. Yeah. But when you look at it all, do you think that we have the possibility? We just don't have a well-run organization enough to be able to have the structure to be successful. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like people are always going to maybe disagree with like federations or specific yeah, yeah. people <clears throat> within federations or whatever. And there's always going to be rivalries and stuff, but it's so hard for the country to develop with the size and the distance that we have where all our players are. If yeah. there isn't like someone who's like leading from the front kind of thing, yeah. like there's not, you, you need that high level of organization. And now that you eliminate like the South American countries, the opportunity like it's not a guarantee or anything, but it's significantly easier to try and qualify as a national team for some of these higher level competitions. Right. Yeah. Obviously like in, uh, when we were in Argentina for the, for the Pan Am championships, we pl I can't remember if we played or if we saw Greenland and they were, they were a good, good team. Um, and they had some professional players and stuff, but I kind of saw them as like, this could almost be what we could be like, do you know what I mean? Like a few really like high level players who play kind of, uh, in Europe and then a bunch of more domestic players who are still really good who work hard and obviously they're smaller and they can kind of come together more but like uh, that would almost maybe be like a good template for Canada like kind of the program they developed like I'd never heard of Greenland as a national team prior to that and then they came with yeah. this unbelievable team right yeah. and I think they almost qualified at that tournament they only lost they had to beat Argentina or only lose to them by a certain amount or something they just couldn't do it but and then obviously a couple of years after I stopped, the senior national team went there and was competitive with them. So the opportunity is there now with only having to play that Caribbean North American teams, right? Yeah. Like we can be competitive and beat some of those teams, but you need to develop more your national team program. But I think also like the team specifically, not just kind of throwing together a team a month or two before a competition, right? which is obviously hard. It takes a lot of commitment from coaches and players, but if you want to play at that level, that's what you need to do. Yeah. Right? If you don't want to commit to that or it's not able to, then you just need to play at a more appropriate level. Yeah. And like, I think you said it perfectly. It's that's what your group of guys in Alberta did when we sat down after Spain, Italy, your groups like we're committing no matter what it takes mm -hmm. you guys ended up being successful. Yeah. But the interesting thing is, I mean, there's the, you know, I debate it with a lot of people and I know it's not the right answer, but like you look at uh, when we went to North American championships, IHF, we won. And I believe we won because we were like pretty much a, a club team with a couple players. So we knew how to play with each other. And when it came down to it, I played the players I was comfortable with which were all Alberta players and Colin who couldn't miss a seven meter if life depended on it. Yeah. Uh, um, but you look at it, even in when Quebec, when the majority of players from Quebec are the national team and you pick up one or two, the successes are greater because you're training more together. You know each other more. And I don't, like you said, I don't believe our national teams can be successful if we just, Hey guys, we're going to get together five days prior to an event and we'll play. You can take all the best players yes. that you have and throw them together, and I would prefer to be on a good team. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like a, a team that knows each other and, like, the group of guys that I played with, I knew what a lot of these guys, how they were going to do in certain situations, you know, when someone's maybe off their game and they need, you know, to kind of be told that. And some guys need, like, a smack on the back of the head and some guys need an arm around the shoulder, right? And you need that like understanding and that way of working together to be successful. If you just have all these guys who can, you know, 
who are fast and can shoot the ball hard and are good at one-on-ones, like, sure, that's great. But when it comes down to any kind of conflict or you're playing another difficult team, if you don't have the cohesiveness, you're not going to do well, which I think is kind of like it's proven in our history of our national team programs. Any success at the national team level was either like an Alberta or Quebec team, essentially with just Canada on their back. And then when they don't have success, it's when you try and piece everyone together and they're only play together a little bit. Yeah. It's it's always going to be the struggle, but at some point, there's been no real development and growth with the national team program in terms of results because they just keep doing the same thing, right? Well, like I say, it's, you know, we can complain about that it costs money, but that it is what it is. If we want to, if you want to be successful, it's going to cost money. Mm-hmm. And so the players have to buy in, or if you don't have the players buying in, then it should be winner of something goes because like, I don't like to go and spend $3,000 to go to a tournament at senior level to lose 47 to three or 47 to 12, whatever it is, it's not worth it at that age. When now you're starting to get a career, or going to university, yeah. you, have to, you have to have the chance to be successful. You don't have to win, but you have to have the chance to, okay, we're going there, we might have a chance to win. Yeah, that was kind of what kind of led me to step away from, it ended up just being handball, but yeah. especially the uh, senior national team was, the experience of playing in the Pan Am Championships was unbelievable. Like it was so yeah. cool. Like if people asking for your autograph all the time and wanting pictures with you, like that's incredible. Like you're yeah. almost like you're a professional athlete for a week, yeah. but so we didn't gain anything from, from that experience other than just yeah. personally, right. As a team, we didn't get better. Obviously there was maybe a bit of a plan in place afterwards, but even still like you're not, you're not, I'd had the experience, like all tons of really good experiences through Alberta and stuff. I wasn't looking for the experience. I was looking for the success as a team or at least working towards success. And if you don't have that and you're putting in all this time and money and effort and sacrificing your personal life, your career, whatever else it is, it's for me, I couldn't justify it. You know, the ends didn't really justify the means kind of thing. So, so now after this time, I mean, I'm not your coach anymore. I mean, I see you at the gyms. I'll run some practices for you guys. You know, obviously we have a great relationship. But you kind of now, you you had eight years, seven years in handball. And when I mean seven years and what people don't understand in Alberta, for you to be an Alberta handball player provincially, it means that you ref. It means pretty much we have 15, 17 uh, youth tournaments with mini handball, junior high, high school, that you, you need to be at. Mm-hmm. we also ask you to coach so you coach facey uh i mean it's hard to say but you don't really have a lot of free time to do yeah. outside stuff and it's 10 11 months out of the year and you were always invested you always gave back you were you know for me if i needed someone you and your group of guys would be like yeah mike whatever you need i would help you no matter what and then you just dropped off and I've never really talked to you about it because, like, every time I see you, I'm just excited to see you. So we just so – how's life going? Mm-hmm. But you just, like you, – you just stopped club. You you were just kind of out of handball. And, I mean, out of handball. You still have to hang out with a lot of those guys. I mean, yeah. you come to watch your girlfriend play, but you, you just kind of stopped playing. So, for me, the playing part was work. Um, I kind of decided what I wanted my career path to kind of be. Yeah. Um, and being along with that was a lot of shift work. So I played one season of club after I'd stopped with the national team and the provincial team. And I could only just the way my schedule would work out. I think I was only able to make it to like less than half of the games. And for me, I just was like, I felt like I was letting my team down. Um, like if I want to be there, I want to be there. Do you know what I mean? Especially being a goalie, like um, every, every position is important, but there's no goalie there. Your, your team's kind of screwed, right? Yeah. You don't have a back. Like someone, you know, can probably step in and might not be great, but can at least pass the ball around. Right. But it's such like a niche position. Yeah. Um, so I felt like I was letting my team down and, and for me, the big part of it was always the team, right? It was always my teammates and your relationship with all the guys and stuff and what you do. So it was almost, it was like an all or nothing mentality for me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I did that that one season of only just being able to be there. And I just felt terrible. I was letting everybody down and 
you know, even though I think there was another guy who was willing to step in and do it. But for me, like, I always wanted to be there. And if I couldn't be, then I just felt like, you know, that I, I shouldn't be there. You can either be there all the time or you know, obviously miss a, a practice or something or a game every now and then. It's not a big deal. But yeah. if I can only be there less than half of the games, I, I just didn't want to kind of compete at that level. Was it hard? Yeah, really hard. Because, um, I mean, handball was like a huge part of my life for – I said seven or eight years. Right. Yeah. So that was like, and, and especially almost basically leading up to the end of playing. That was what my focus was all the time. That's why, that's why I started like working out and going to the gym and, and training. And like, I met Christina through handball and all my best friends even now are all still through handball. So it was a, a big, big part of my life. And then it was just reduced to, like you said, kind of seeing, seeing people at, at the gym, you know, I maybe see three or four games a year or something like that. And then during high school season, just coaching at Bev Facey, which I really like and I'll do for as long as I can. But yeah. um, like that, I went from like a hundred to 5% yeah. of handball, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was, it was weird to have, I know it sounds like that, but it was weird to have like all this free time all of a sudden. I'm like, what, like, what do I do with myself? Like I'm used to like, always doing so much handball and I, and I like, I loved it. Right. So it was almost like a void for a little while and I still miss it. And I miss just for me, it was always about my team. I was always like my thing. Like, obviously you want to win and we had a lot of success, which was awesome. But even if we didn't have had, like if we wouldn't have been that successful, like you still can't beat the like relationships you, you make and like the different people you meet. And even if you're only friendly with like, you know, you play with someone for a year or two and then they kind of drop off. Like that's invaluable. Those people you meet and I'll run into guys that I played with for a season or two or people from the girls program from time to time. And it's almost like an old friend kind of thing, even though you only knew them for a little while. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's really hard to like have that. And then it's just kind of reduced. It's good for your bank account though, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not make account. Yeah. Uh, do you ever think you'll play club again, or you think you're just retired? I don't know. I'd like to play. Um, I was having this conversation a little while ago. Like, I'd be scared to play because I would probably end up getting hurt. Um, you and, never were hurt. You never got hurt. No, no. In terms of like flexibility for anybody oh, whoever, yeah. okay. whoever played with me or watched me play, like that was kind of my thing. Yeah. Um, and I definitely can't stretch like I used to be able to. So I think if I were to play, my mind and instincts would be telling me to do one thing. And then, you know, my hamstrings would tell me that I can't do that anymore. How old are you? 23? 24? 25. 25. I love it. In Alberta, we, people are like, oh, my hamstrings are 25. When you listen to other people in other states or provinces, it's like, I'm still playing at 42 years old. Yeah. I mean... I could, I could stretch and get everything loosened up, but I would, uh, yeah, the flexibility isn't there. I mean, I could get it back if I yeah. really put in the effort. Yeah, but. yeah. Do you, I mean, in Alberta, we have a huge drop off when seniors happens. Like people play one, two years of seniors and they drop off. Um, is it hard in a way because of like the competitiveness is like, in our junior and youth programs, we work so hard to become the best. But then when you get to senior and you know, life, life comes in so you can't train as much you know you just do club and you watch other players start catching up and becoming better is that a hard transition yeah it is and I mean we do so so much at the youth level because if you want to be competitive when you go to Europe you have to and like you the mentality which is good and you need it to be successful is kind of that all or nothing kind of thing which is fine when you're, you know, you're still in high school or I I was in university, but I played with guys who are in university, but it's hard to have that full level of commitment as you're kind of moving into adulthood and starting, starting a career or a family or whatever, whatever that looks like. So it's hard to have the mentality growing up, you know, a hundred percent all or nothing. And then you're, not actually able to give that anymore because of you have other stuff going on so I think you almost just kind of hey I can't play anymore because I'm used to playing at this certain standard you know what I mean and you need that standard at the younger ages or at least when we were playing because you didn't start when you were eight or nine 
you started when you were 15 or 16. So you had to kind of catch up. So I think maybe as like, obviously like mini handball and elementary school kids are starting, there's like, I was watching some of those, um, some of the other, like chatting with some of the other players and stuff. And some of these kids are saying, Oh, I started when I was like 11 or yeah, yeah. You read some of this stuff. So by the time they hit 18, they have that seven or eight years as opposed for me, it was like you hit 18 and you played for two. Yeah. So I think maybe as, you know, because they didn't need to put in that amount of time because they have that, that time growing up to develop and grow. Yeah. So I, I think that drop off of the senior age might kind of disappear almost once yeah. because they're, you know, obviously they, they commit a lot and they put in, put in a lot of time and effort, yeah. but they don't feel like they need to put in, you know, 150% yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like our clubs are getting stronger our youth. Yeah. Like, I mean, we have U14 provincial teams, so it's, you know, you don't have to travel like you guys six times to Europe in a season almost. Yeah. And, and you had to be like, obviously there weren't as many players, but you had to be like the best to even play for Alberta. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now with like a development program, like you can have the potential to be one of the best, but if you're still working on your skills, you can still yeah. play, which is fantastic, right? You don't have to be like yeah. the elite of the elite. So you don't have to have that kind of mentality of like, if I'm not all in, there's someone else who's going to slide in and be better than me. Any regrets? Like when you look back, do you look back and go, I did too much with handball or is it all good memories or? Oh, it's all good memories. Um, like I wouldn't change the time and the money and the effort and everything is all worth it for me. Um, the experiences and like you, you learn so much about yourself and like life. I guess it sounds kind of cliche and corny. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then the relationships you build are impossible to replace. Um, like even you, like I see you a few times a year, but every time we see each other, we're like super excited and we're always chatting and yeah. you, it's hard to find that anywhere else. Right. It's hard yeah. to build relationships with people like that. Um, I wish I was a little bit more like open to like other people and stuff. Like I was just so competitive and wanted to always win. Like that was all that mattered. And that probably rubbed some people the wrong way, maybe. Um, so I wish maybe I would have, would have dialed that, <laughs> that down a little bit, but you know, I was competitive and I, that's what I wanted. And that's kind of how I played. So sure, there's yeah. a few people that I played with or whatever who didn't maybe love me, but it is what it is. Yeah. I still remember the one thing you came back from Denmark and you let in a fast break goal and you just got pissed off and you kicked the ball across the gym. <laughs> I think I kicked the crossbar. Yeah, the crossbar. Yeah, yeah. You kicked the crossbar. We were like, whoa, relax there, Ty uh, Tyler. Yeah. Um, where's life taking you now? What are you doing for work and life? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a peace officer. So I work for Alberta Health Services. So I work at oh. uh, the Royal Alex downtown. Um, uh, my goal, a lot of people know me, has always been to get into policing. Yeah. Uh, so at some point, I hope to apply to the police with the city of Edmonton. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm content where I am right now. It's really good experience, and I enjoy what I do and like the people I work with and stuff. Kind of a lot of my handball experiences kind of almost translate into what I do now. Like I work with a team and in a team environment, and you know, a lot of my kind of like I guess I'm really comfortable working with it in a team, and that. A lot comes from handball, just traveling with all those people and, you know, becoming close with people, that kind of thing. So, um, and, uh, now. and you still, still shift work? Yeah. Yeah. So I work nights and day shifts and long shifts and stuff. So, yeah. um, and that, I that's found what makes it hard for handball. I every now and then I kind of have the thought of like, I'd like to come back to handball yeah. in a little bit more capacity than I am now. Um, but it's just so hard with doing shift work because it's yeah. just you can't commit to like weekends all the time and you know Monday nights you know I'll be able to come for three or four in a row and then we'll be able to come for three and four in a row kind of thing so yeah what um and just before we started uh I didn't know you you have a house yeah yeah Christine and I live together and we got a house together and stuff so adulthood <laughs> yeah are you guys engaged and stuff no 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 marriage yet no, I mean, you know, one day I'm sure that'll yeah. be in the plan, I guess. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. we're happy right now where we are. Like I always say, though, just remember that I was the one that set you guys up. Yeah, I think the first picture of us ever. Yeah. Is, well, I shouldn't say I think. I know the first picture of us ever is in Iceland on New Year's Eve, up on that church watching the fireworks kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah. I think it was just like, hey, like you guys are graduating high school, like 
there was a bunch of people on that trip in Iceland who were graduating that year. Um, yeah. And it was like, hey, like, you know, you're meeting people here, they're your age, like, you should find a date for grad kind of thing. And like that, that's, you know, Christina was my grad date. And then yeah. here we are seven years later. <laughs> Yeah, I remember I was sitting in the in the house that the girls were at and they were talking and she was, oh, she said something about you. So it just kind of clicked. I was yeah. like, okay, okay, let me work yeah. on that. It was cool. That, I mean, those are the great experiences, eh? Yeah, and that's that's the stuff that, like, you can't replace and it's so hard to find, like, in other sports and stuff. And you yeah. don't really realize it, at, like, at the time, like, how valuable that is. Yeah. Um, if you could remember one game you've played that was your best experience, do you have one game that you remember that was a game that you just love and you always talk about? I have so many for like varying reasons. Okay. Um, one game I remember is for the senior national team at, at, at Pan Ams and we played Argentina um, in Argentina. So that was the most people I'd ever played in front of. There was maybe like, I don't even know, a couple thousand people in the crowd kind of thing, which yeah. doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, when you're there, like it, that's a lot of people. Um, and I, I didn't start, um, but I came off the bench and I think I made two saves maybe in the whole game, maybe three. And one of them was um, on a fast break. Like I just got my fingertips to this, this save, but I remember the whole crowd cheering and uh, we were down by I think, probably 20 or 30 at that point. And the, the player was, um, I can't remember his first name. So there's Diego Simone, like the one who plays. Yeah. And then he has, I think, an older brother who's like pretty good. You're like Pablo Simone or something like that? So. And it was, it was the youngest brother, who's the worst. Okay. Player, but I mean, he's still pretty good. <laughs> yeah. It was him that I made it save on. <laughs> so that one kind of stands up for me. And he kind of gave me a little like pat on the back as he kind of looped around back to his own end. So that, that was kind of cool for me. Uh, um, do, you, uh, do, you, uh, do you have any other ones? Uh, I'll always remember winning in Puerto Rico, like on when we were on the podium. The, yeah. well, the picture is so cool. It's I love that picture. It's my favorite and picture. And we look like we're drenched in sweat. Yes. We were, but after the game, the first, second, third place teams before the presentation, we had to go outside. I don't know if you remember while well, they set up the gym for the yeah. ceremony and it was pouring rain. So we're standing out in the pouring rain. So we come in, you know, even more soaked than we already were. So it looked like we were, like giving it our all because we're just drenched, but like half of it was really rain. So I think but that, it looks good like that. Oh, you yeah. should not tell that story. Hair is all slicked back and your jersey yeah. just soaked through. Oh, yeah. I, with the Canada flag you guys had, I, it's my yeah. favorite picture. And I'll remember that because they played the anthem. It was just a recording. There was no singing. And they played it. And, of course, we all sang. But they didn't know when the anthem, like, kind of ended or whatever. So they played it again. So we listened to the anthem like one and a half times. <laughs> it's so well organized. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think other games. Um, I remember a couple in Iceland having played just, Iceland was always one of my favorite places to go. Yeah. Just like, it was so like handball oriented, just a gym, like on every corner it seemed like, and yeah. all these different big clubs and stuff. And I remember I personally played like really, really well in all those exhibition games. Um, and just thinking like that was like a turning point for me of like oh maybe I can like take this somewhere kind of thing yeah. I think it was a team with like it's like a red kind of like um, a velour well, velour yeah it was against and they them. had their you can like they had their own store yeah 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 there was like That's a five gym complex with a like it was like a professional team yeah velour yeah sponsored by Hummel probably and yeah. tons of really big name sponsors on their jerseys and stuff yeah, that was pretty cool. Cool. Yeah. Um, well, like uh, I think for me as a coach, you were one of the one of my favorite players I've ever coached. I mean, your work ethic and your desire to be the best. I like you said, you guys were a team, but I think you were really one of the big leaders of the team. I think you had that. You know, I think many players on the team had different different leadership qualities, and right. I think yours was like vocal. I think yeah. you always kept the guys in check. You made sure everyone was ready. And uh, it, it, as a coach, I think your group was one of my favorite times coaching, which is such a, such a great group to coach. And, you know, 
you guys bought into me and you respected me and you know whatever I said as a coach you guys did and it was just uh it was a blast yeah I'll tell you we're kind of like four or five years there kind of thing we're kind of leading up to our junior national run and including that was uh, yeah unreal and yeah and and Tyrell was so jealous sorry Tyrell was so jealous yeah, he couldn't couldn't get yeah, it. Yeah, he's like, things. "Yo, man, why didn't I have this?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that just shows, and I hope it keeps growing like that. But it shows like the change generation to generation, right? Yeah, even from now to like, net, like how many players there are now, and yeah. where some of these kids are going to play and stuff like that. Like, yeah. it's just it's unreal to see. And I see Hummel everywhere now, which is weird. Yeah, I know, right? I used to see people wearing Hummel, and I would know them. Or if I ran into somebody and they found out I played handball, they'd say, oh, my cousin plays handball. You must know them. And so-and-so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I played with them. Yeah. And now it's like I don't even – someone's wearing Hummel and, or I see these like names. Like, I don't know who this person is. And yeah, I know. Eh? The number of players and stuff. But I just hope that the – like they kind of keep that mentality of like we have to do as good as we can. Like you're not always going to win and that's fine. Yeah. And you shouldn't expect to. But you know, they always kind of keep pushing themselves and stuff. But the problem is, uh, like, the tough thing is we're winning so easily at so many categories now that it's, like, almost, like, it's hard to keep them motivated. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's some girls that are 20 that have that have won, like, seven golds at Nationals. They've never lost a game at Nationals. And their closest game is, like, by 15. Last year, our juniors team won 47 to 11 against Quebec. Mm-hmm. Like, it's it, – it's, uh, it's, it, it almost. yeah well it's the tough thing is that's you got to go to europe you got to go to places where we can be competitive yeah so so who knows but i mean that's that's kudos to you and your program that that built that culture in uh in our programs that you know work hard and will win and develop yeah like we all i'm i can't speak for other people but i always had so much pride to like put on an alberta jersey oh i still remember like first getting into the youth programs and like I'd seen, like I followed ATHF on Facebook and stuff and I'd seen these, like these guys that I knew, I'm like, they're provincial team players. Like that, that was a, like a huge step in, in my eyes and it was such a cool opportunity. And then when it was like my chance to do it, like I always thought that was so awesome. And, you know, you do your best to kind of represent Alberta and ATHF and like all the people that that means and stuff. So yeah. I feel like we kind of push for that culture and I hope that it kind of stays that way. Right. Like yeah. it's, doesn't matter if you're destroying teams or how many provincial teams we have based on numbers. Like it's still yeah. such a special thing to do, right? Yeah. And yeah, I, I agree. You, know, you take it for granted. Like to yeah. play at a provincial team level in any sport is is huge. It doesn't matter the number of players or how popular the sport is or anything. Like it's it's a huge honor. So yeah, I agree. I hope people don't. It's it's easy to forget because you do it. You you know some people have are lucky enough to do it so much yeah. and. It, it's easy to forget that that's special. Yeah, and it's that people forget where we were at and mm-hmm. where we've come. And, like, I think players come in now and they're like, oh, we just, it's easy. We just beat everyone. I'm like, no, it wasn't that easy. It took oh, yeah. us years and years and years to be able to have programs at so many ages to be so successful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember when we went, I coached the youth team in Germany, when you and Craig, when we went as the coaches. And we had two teams in Germany and I was like, wow, we have two, like two teams worth. Like, this is awesome. And now like four or five teams. Is we, skateboard, right? we went to Serbia two years ago with 104 players. Yeah. We, we had, booked, the whole hotel was ours. Yeah. We yeah. had like 35 and we're like, this is so many kids. How are we going to keep track of them? <laughs> yeah. And we're scared to cut someone because we're like, we can't lose anybody. Yeah, if you lose one or two people, then you don't have two teams anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 cool to see. I mean, we'll see what happens with COVID and coming back and see what happens to kids playing sports and stuff. But I guess we'll see with there. But uh, I don't want to keep you uh, too much longer. I know you're a busy man, but I just want to thank you for this. Uh, it's great catching up with you, and I know yeah. that people are gonna love hearing uh, from you and. Uh, uh, hopefully we'll see you in the handball gym as a spectator coach player just to be able to see you again and uh it's yeah all... I, I definitely really want to start making a some a comeback on some level i don't know what that's going to look like but yeah i was thinking refing i don't know maybe I'll oh, take yeah. a couple courses because i'm sure my refing is uh 
not nearly up to scratch at all, but yeah, I'll come to some courses and I can ref some games. And exactly. Good money. Thing and we need it. So yeah, perfect. Well, thank you, Tyler. And, uh, uh, keep doing what you're doing in life. It looks like everything is fantastic for you. And it, it's great to see that. Yeah. Thanks Mike. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you. This is awesome. And it, it's so nice to see. And I love how like ATHF is kind of like expanding like these and those, where are they now things like the stuff yeah. outside of, of just the handball is cool to see. Like cool. that's good you. for the intergenerational, like, I don't know. I don't really know anyone in the younger <laughs> generations who play now, but yeah. You know, they'll be able to kind of see faces and it's good to kind of put a face in a name and kind of hear the voices and what people have to say and you know, yeah. kind of learn from people and stuff. So, well, thank you, Tyler. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, bud. Yeah, thanks. Take care, Mike. You too. Bye. Bye bye.